In this video, we're going to look at a Python program that's going to read in some data and then fit that data to a logistic growth curve function model, whatever you want to call it. Um, so I'm going to use a number of modules, uh, and that will include uh, pandas and OpenPyXL. So that's going to help me sort of read, read in the information from Excel. I'm going to use the OS, the operating system module, and that's going to allow me to uh, set the, the working directory to be where the Python program is because I'm going to do some saving at the end and I want to save my file in, in the same folder as where the Python is, so I'll know where to look. Um, I'm making a plot, so that's going to be uh, matplotlib. Um, I need to evaluate some of the functions, um, sort of for for a whole list of, uh, going to get y's for a whole list of x's, and so uh, num, numpy is going to help me with that, and then the actual nonlinear curve fitting is going to come from a scipy. So we're going to be fitting to a logistic growth model. So one thing I want to say is that the uh, so we're doing a regression we're fitting, but we, we are doing a regression to, and then the logistic comes in with the, the function or the model. Um, there's something else distinct called logistic regression. We're not doing that. We're, we're doing a regression or a fitting to a logistic growth model. Also, the parameters in this model are, it's the parameters that are not linear. It's not, doesn't matter if the function is nonlinear so much as are the parameters nonlinear and the parameters appear in places that are nonlinear. And there's some cases where the parameters are in a nonlinear position, but you can play some math trick on the data and, and sort of and make it linear. Uh, this is not one of those uh, cases, like a power law or an exponential. Those are places where you can sort of linearize the data if you want. Um, so a logistic growth model, here's uh, Wikipedia on the subject. Uh, here is the function I'm going to be fitting to. It's got uh, three parameters. So that L, that's sort of what it goes up to. In this graph, it's going up to one. Um, the X, X is the variable. And then the L and the K and the X zero are the parameters. L is what it goes up to. Um, X zero is sort of when it's sort of halfway to where it's going. And it's also the inflection point. And then the K is sort of how fast does it do it? Is it a very sharp transition? Is it a very spread out transition? And that's determined by K. Okay, so we brought in our models. We might have done some pip install. Here's the code that I use for setting the current working directory to where the Python file is. Here's me using pandas to read the Excel. I'm reading it off the internet. Um, I have, when I post, well, I have posted this and uh, that includes the Excel because I can't be sure that, you know, people might not encounter um, more security issues than I, I didn't, you know, run into any security issues and I could read this file. But um, if you have any problems, I'm also supplying the Excel. When you read this in, it makes uh, what Pandas calls a data frame. Um, but uh, Matt, matplotlib uh, seemed to want uh, lists. So this is the code 17 and 18, um, converting the code uh, from uh, a field within a data frame to a list. Um, in the Excel, uh, I need to know which sheet I'm reading. So I'm saying here sheet one. And I also need to know the, the top row in the Excel becomes the name of the field. And so I had to, you know, I had to have some access to the Excel to know what these uh, names were. 
there might be another way around it, but that's the way at least I was doing it. Now I'm starting to make my graph. Uh, this is me filling in the background color. What's that? Uh, sort of a blue, very light blue comes off as almost purpley to me sometimes. Um, and a grid. Let's run it so I can just point. There's that blue background and the grid. Um, making a scatter, making my uh, data points. Um, the X's are years, the Y's are deaths. This is AIDS deaths in the 1980s. It's thousands of deaths. So it's, this is thousands of deaths versus years since 1980. So two corresponds to 1982. Okay. And this is a sort of a size of the dot, a transparency of the dot, the color of the dot, then the dot has sort of a um, an outer shell or something around it, um, sort of a line around it. That, so that's the color of the line around it. I'm going to, that's just the basic uh, fit of the, or not the fit, but the plot of the data. Now I want to start fitting the data. So we're defining the function. Um, the first, uh, first thing here is the variable. I'm going to have a, a variable and three parameters. So the first thing is the variable. So the x, the x that I'm plotting in here is the variable. And then l, x0, and k were the parameters. And this is the, the definition of the function, which then gets returned. And NP is the numpy. So I'm sort of working not just sort of a point at a time, but sort of with a list. And so I need a definition of, if I don't have any fancy, if I don't have any functions, if I just have things multiplied or raised to powers, I sort of can get away a with not needing numpy here. But if I need sine or cosine or exponential or something like that, um, then I need something that defines that function for me, but also defines that function sort of acting on an entire list. So I can't just use the math library. I, I need the NumPy. This is just me reminding uh, what these parameters are for. The L is the maximum value. The X is sort of the midway point or the inflection point. And the K has something to do with the growth. And when you use a SciPy's curve fit method, you specify the function that you're fitting to, the X's and the Y's, and then you have a sort of list, your sort of initial guesses at the parameters. And you got to make sure you sort of obey the order here, of course. So I was, I had, you know, had some peek at the data before I started fitting it. And I sort of said, oh, L, I'm going up to around 40. The uh, midway point was close to eight. And then just visually, I don't have as good a feel for what the K is, but I just sort of have to get its sign right. So if, if it's going up, I'll start with a K of one if it were going down. If we're going in the opposite direction, then I would have chosen a negative K. So those are my first guesses. It does this nonlinear least squares fit. And uh, least squares is sort of a standard. You need something you want to minimize. The standard thing is to take the, a deviation, a difference between your fit y and your actual data y for a given x for for all the x's but then for a given x square them so that they're positive whether you're too high or too low they're all positive then add them all up and that's usually what you target to uh minimize so you play with these parameters until that and then you get two things out of this one is the actual fitting parameters and then the other thing is sort of information about uh how good of a fit it is. Uh, I'm just interested right now in the parameters. I'm going to put the two curves together and just visually sort of see for myself if I think it's a good fit or not. 
So the first one was the L, the second one was the uh, transition point, the, the sort of inflection point, if you will. And the K is this growth rate. So I'm just sort of extracting them from, from this. I'm printing them out so you can see them down here. I ended up with a 41, a 7.8, and a 0.569. I'm making a sequence of X's because now I'm going to plot the curve. So I'm just making a sequence of X's from the minimum year to the maximum year, throwing down 100 points. And then I'm plotting that. So this is my fit curve. Here are the X's. Here are the Y's. And again, using NumPy because I'm working with a whole list. I'm doing math on an entire list of X's. And I made them black, uh, sort of half transparent. And uh, this is a thickness. I decided to display the equation. So I said, here's the logistic growth model. I said what the model was. Backslash N gives me a new line. And then... Uh, Here's my equation with these curly brackets where I'm going to substitute in my numbers and I'm going to say I want uh, two decimal places. So there's all of these numbers I'm showing with two decimal places. So that's that was that two there. And then here's me adding that text to an X of 5.5 and a Y of 5. 5.5 and 5, so it's that it's the bottom left of my uh, of what I'm displaying. Give my graph a title, an x-axis label, a y-axis label, save it to the PDF. Do I have that? No, I didn't. Where am I? It's under a folder. I'm sort of absurdly labeled linear regression, what this is not, but uh, AIDS death PDF, there it is. And there, that's what I saved. And I just gave it by the name of the file, but because of what the work I did with the O, the operating system module at the beginning, uh, just the name of the file is understood to be placed along next to the where the Python file is. And then finally the show, which gave me my pop-up. So that's what I wanted to show you. Read some data from Excel. That was pandas and open uh, the OpenPy Excel. Um, I plotted it. That was matplotlib. Um, some work with uh, numpy for both the displaying and the fitting and, and scipy for doing the, the curve fit. So, and again, it's a non-linear fit. So that's that was sort of more exacting and one needs uh, sort of an initial guess of these parameters and then it sort of refines your guess based on minimizing a least square of the sum of the, sum of the deviations and then minimizes that. All right, that's what I wanted to show you in this one. Thanks for your attention.